is everybody doing? Oh my goodness, good to see ya. Real Rocky. Nice. Crush the share, crush the follow, folks. Get this thing going. Yeah, they play a lot of ACDC here in Cincinnati. Yeah, it seems like every time I get in the truck, ACDC's on. <laughs> oh my goodness, how is everybody doing? Wow. Monday mood, we're up, feeling good, feeling happy. Oh man. We got some stories to talk about. Things you won't hear in the news. Yeah. Oh man. There we go. One more time. Here we go. Crush the share. Crush the follow. There you go. Oh man. Just voted. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. All right. Hey, hey, how you doing? Who be there? DG. How you doing, DG? I'm now following you, DG. Good to see you on the scope. Oh, man. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Here we go, here we go, here we go. One last time. Crush the share, crush the follow. All right, if I'm not following you and you do crush the share, crush the follow, either one, if you just crush the share, I will follow you back, show you that I am good for my word. You see an authorized vehicle broke into White House barrier. Oh, no, I did not see that. I checked the news just before I left. Oh, my goodness. Guys, we, we all know this. We talk about this. We've got to pray for the safety of our president, pray for the safety of our country. Um, it, I mean, it truly is in the hands of God at this point in time. Uh, God has blessed us and God has granted us another opportunity to have America and the freedom that we, we so truly desire and that we so truly deserve. Much blood has been shed for the freedoms and for the uh, all the excellent things we have here in America. The reason why America is not a third world country is because of all the hard work, the tenacity, the, uh, the, the bloodshed, the, the wars that we fought, the ideas in place, and the blessing from God. That's what sets America apart from every other country in the world. If you live in a asshole country, a third world country, and you don't want to be there, well, then you can migrate legally to another country if you want. You know, put in an application, apply for it if you want. Or <clears throat> why don't you just organize, organize the people and change your country? Do something about it. Now, don't come to our country and make our country like that. We don't want that. Okay, so let's talk about the midterms. Let's talk about the red tsunami that's coming. I've got proof, proof positive, folks. This is proof positive. Two different articles, and by the way, real quick, my name is Brian Smith. If this is the first time you've been on The Scope, I am the co-host of Smith Radio, Crush Share, Crush Follow. Uh, we go live every Sunday evening, 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern, and we went live last night. Uh, my co-host, Carrie Smith, my cousin, was uh, gravely sick. Yeah, I mean, the flu is really sick, and uh, Hurricane Willa Cat 5 now heading into west mexico then into texas and they've been beat down with those hurricanes this season huh it's been pretty rough all right don't distract um so so we went live last night however my cousin carrie was sick very very sick i talked to him on the phone he sounded awful talked to him after the show he sounded a little bit better he's getting better he says he feels like he's he's on the uh on the back side of that sickness so I went live by myself last night. I went live for two hours. I did the best uh, best I felt I could do. Um, I felt pretty good about the show. Go check the show out. It's on our website, smithradio.com. It's uh, on Periscope, and I'm going to put the show live on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and um, and you get to check it out, you can see it on Facebook. Uh, w- whether you saw it last night or not, just hit the thumbs up, like it, and then share it. That would be I'm much obliged. I appreciate it. So, uh, 
So what's going on with this red tsunami? I got proof. Proof the red tsunami is real. Proof that it's coming down the right way. First off, and I talked about this last night, and I'll just recap for those of you who didn't see the show last night, just to recap. Okay. Um, voting. Voting, voter turnout. Voter turnout. Right now they're doing polls. They're polling a couple thousand people and saying that that's the, gen, uh, that's the genesis of everybody that's voting, which we saw in 2016 was awful. The polling was awful. We know the polling is rigged. We know the media wants to rig it because they're trying to help the Democrats to steal it all over again. So, no, you can't believe the polls. So you're like, Brian, well, what do I believe, Brian? If I can't believe the polls, or who, whose poll do I believe? And everybody's trying to pick a poll. But the problem is these polls are flawed. Most of them have flaws in them. And you don't get a, a real good accuracy uh, with the polls. So here's something that's come up. That's been noted, and is, there's an article written about it. Like I said, I talked about it last night on the show. Very, very good evidence. So, they looked at the request for absentee ballots, and they looked at the returns for absentee ballots. Now, obviously, you can only do this just a few weeks out from the election, so this wouldn't uh, might not work so well a month in advance, two months. In, you can't do that, so I guess... Polling is what it is, but we're getting so close now. Here's what's real, folks. Got two different two different stories about this. First off, the return or the requests for absentee ballots for the Democrat Party and the returns for absentee ballots. Like they voted absentee and they actually got the ballot back. The returns and the votes uh, normally, and this is typical from a presidential election to a midterm, are down. They're below 2016 numbers for the Democrats. So that's normal. And you would you would expect that to be even lower for the Republicans. Folks, you got to understand, this is an off-season uh, election. A lot of people don't vote midterm. I've got my wife, uh, my mother, my sister, uh, my millennial, his wife. i got five people who have never voted midterm in their life that voted Trump that are voting midterm now. Okay, so I, and I've been preaching this. I'm preaching this to y'all. You you got to uh, you got to do what you got to do. You got you got to talk to people who voted for Trump. If they voted for Trump, just ask them. Say, are you registered in the midterm? Are you registered to vote? And if they say yes, say, are, are you voting midterm? And just easily get that out. You got to find out if they're voting midterm. If they say, nah, I don't know who to vote for. You just look them dead in the eye and you say, you vote Republican, take it down. And, and not only that, Senate and House Republican, take it down. Don't play around, folks. It's got to be this. It has to be this way. It cannot be any other way. I am for real. It has to be Republican, take it down. That's how critical this 2018 election is. It is very critical. You see the mobs, not jobs. I mean... That's coming out of the Democrat Party. Mobs, not jobs. I mean, if you want mobs, vote Democrat. Seriously. If you want jobs and not mobs, you vote Trump. This election, this election, 2018, this is just a few weeks away. November 6th, it's right around the corner. It's going to be here before you know it. Again, there's people on the scope that have already voted, voted absentee. So what is up with the Republican absentee numbers? The request for voter absentee ballots and the return for voter ballots, the returns for Republicans, would normally, and this is historically normally, be lower, be lower than the losing party, like the losing party of the Democrats. have been losing for 700 straight days. Been losing for 700 straight days. So the losing party would normally be energized to get out the vote for midterm to get back at the fact that they lost. That's historic true. What we're seeing now, what we're seeing now is that the the request for absentee and the return for absentee for Democrats is, is low, lower than 2016, that's normal. For Republican is beyond 2016. It's beyond 2016. The numbers are for absentee request and the numbers for returns for Republican ballots is higher than when we voted for Donald Trump. 
folks, this is huge. This is really, really, really big. And uh, uh, Ralph Reed, who's a Christian leader, uh, big guy in the Christian movement, huge in the Christian mu movement. He was there in uh, uh, September in St. Louis at the Eagle Council when we got to get when we get, got together and uh, we 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 listened to speakers speak. And Mike Cernovich was there. We got to see Mike Cernovich's movie, great movie, awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, and uh, 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 Ralph Reed was there and he spoke. And it's just an article that came back up again that uh, on Gateway Pundit, they reposted this article. It was about his speech, and he talked about the Christian base. For 2016, 27%, 27% of those that voted, 27% uh, identified, self-identified as Christian for 2016, and Donald Trump received... Uh, Donald Trump received 81% of the vote, 81% of the Christian vote, which is the highest that has ever been recorded for Donald Trump, okay? That's that much. 16% voted for Hillary Clinton. That's the lowest ever recorded for a candidate to receive Christian uh, 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 votes. So it was clear as day, folks, clear as day. We know who it is. So Ralph Reed, uh, speaking in September, talking about the millions of Christian voters through the Rust Wave Belt, Middle America, any town USA, that he and his coalition have been working with Christians and churches, urging them, you must absolutely continue this push and continue to vote Republican. The getting out the vote, pushing big, pushing big, Ralph Reed, Christian Coalition, making a big difference in these elections because Donald Trump, and they said this at the Gateway uh, uh, Council, they said this, uh, that Donald Trump is the most pro-life candidate that we've ever seen. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump is the most pro-life candidate we have ever seen. We're witnessing a huge movement of the Christian community being being restored once again, the values being restored once again, and having a constitutional judges on the on whether it be circuit court judges or whether it be uh, uh, Supreme Court judges. We've got constitutional judges that adhere to the Constitution. Uh, the Judeo Christian values is how this country was founded upon right versus wrong and right now it's mob versus jobs right is jobs law and order is jobs and donald trump wrong is mobs that's the democrat party okay with that being said there was an article that was written uh just last week and um breitbart re re comments it was kind of weird it was it was an opinion piece and then breitbart had an opinion on the opinion piece, it was like, what? Okay, whatever. Anyways, so it was, it was posted in the USA. To, it was posted in USA Today, and it was by uh, um, oh Ken Fisher. If you don't know Ken Fisher, he's on the top Forbes top four hundred uh, richest people in the in, uh, in the world. He tops the top four hundred richest. He's somewhere around two hundred. Ken Fisher has written books, uh, best-selling author, and a, a great, uh, great thinker, great mind thinker. So he was reading an article posted by USA Today that, the, in the article, it detailed all 50 states and the ec economic state of each individual state. Poor state, rich state, back and forth, back and forth. And he started to analyze this, and he started to think that, hey, uh, I think there might be something to this, almost like the book Outliers, where the guy sat down, uh, Malcolm, Malcolm sat down and was uh, at a hockey game, and he was looking at the list, a hockey list of the players, and he saw the birth dates of the players were almost all the same month, and like the same month, and all the famous hockey players, he started seeing this pattern, and he wanted to figure it out, why was this pattern happening? So, so, Ken Fisher started to wonder why is this pattern happening with these uh, all 50 states. We've got poor states. We've got rich states. 
Is this political? Is there some kind of political aspect to this? Who is in control of the legislature in each one of these states? It's a phenomenal read, folks. I posted it up on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, you absolutely have to be, and I'll follow you back at Brian P. Smith, at Brian P. Smith. And uh, it, if you just if you don't remember that, just go to smithradio.com. Uh, Carrie's Twitter feed is on our uh, on the website on the left. My Twitter feed is right underneath his on the left. And then Donald Trump's Twitter feed's right in the middle of the website, so you never miss a moment. So Ken Fisher is looking into who runs the legislature of each one of these states, rich states versus poor states. And he's starting to see a pattern. And he's starting to see that two-thirds of the poorest states are controlled by Republicans. And I'm not going to get into the numbers because they kind of muddy the water, but i just 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 throwing this out there. Two-thirds of the states that are the poorest states, 18 out of 19, are controlled by Republicans, majority Republican. The rich states, the richer states, uh, Hawaii's one of them, uh, one of the poor states, Michigan's one of them. Uh, so he started pointing those states out that were rich and showed that the majority of those rich states, legislation, legislature is controlled by the Democrats. And the states that are in the middle, not poor, not rich, in the middle are kind of back and forth Republican, back of half Republican, half Democrat. So there's this absolute crystal clear divide between the rich states and the poor states. And the Democrats run the rich states and the Republicans are in charge of the poorer states. I started, I started thinking about this. I'm like, ah, uh, that don't sound good. That that actually sounds bad. Like, like you're telling me that the Republicans are running poor states like Michigan? Well, that's true, folks. The Republicans have, have the majority of the legislature in the state of Michigan. And you're like, okay, Brian. So... And I just started thinking about this. I'm like, that doesn't sound good. I start thinking more and more and more. I'm starting to get skeptical about the article. And I, the question that was in my mind was when or has this ever, is this a new trend for one? And has this ever been different in the past? Meaning Republicans had control of rich states and Democrats had control of poor states. Well, if you look back 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, it was, it was truly flipped in a sense that the Democrats had the control of the rich states, meaning Michigan. And I'm pointing Michigan out because that's an absolute failed state right there. Completely fa- Detroit, the city of Detroit had more money and more wealth going through a single city than in all of recorded human history was going through the city of Detroit. And today looks like Fallujah. Looks like some kind of war-torn zone in the Middle East. It's absolutely decimated. It's unbelievable how decimated it was. And just 40 years ago, the most amount of wealth going through one single city than in any other city like that in all of human history. And it was flipped, folks. It was different. So now, Ken Fisher didn't say this in his article. But I am saying it because I read the entire article and I saw how he mentioned that in the past, roles were reversed. And the media, the media is saying that the Democrats are control. They, they, they own the poor, poor vote. They own the poor vote. Look at these cities. Look at Los Angeles. Look at New York. Look at Chicago. Now, that now, now, when you look at city by city like that, yes, Democrats own those poor cities. But as a whole, in the state, Republicans own the outlying areas of those cities and all the outlying poor areas. And when I say when I say own them. I don't mean own like ownership of ownership, 
but the poor people outside of the major cities like Chicago and Los Angeles, they vote Republican. They absolutely have flipped. They no longer vote Democrat. They vote Republican. They don't get the handouts like the inner cities do. And the, and the Democrats keep the inner cities poor, keep the people uneducated, force them into awful, awful uh, 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 government government housing, government education, government indoctrination. That's what they do in the big cities like uh, Chicago and Los Angeles. Um, so with that being said, I mean, that that's it's kind of like a little side note, but I will, Ken Fisher does make that a point. Yes, the Democrats may have the, the poor votes in the city, but at, at, as a larger picture, the Republicans are now holding more votes outside of the cities of poor, lower income individuals that are more than the, than the cities. It's a bigger, it's a whole state that they're talking about. And the Republicans run the state legislature in the poorer states. Now, here's my conclusion. Twofold. One, I believe that poor poorer people and those that, that used to vote Union Democrat, those that were lower on the totem pole, lower in the education field, maybe even younger, back 20, 30, 40 years ago, voted Democrat because of unions, government handouts, and government jobs. Unions are on the decline, massively on the decline, and we know there's no such thing as a pension anymore. My generation, Gen X, for all you baby boomers out there, I hope you enjoy your pensions because you ruined it. You ruined it and you wrecked it for everybody. You robbed the coffers and you stole it. You took more than you ever deserved. And y'all are living the high life down in Florida. You, you, you put uh, five lugs on a wheel for 35 years and you retired with a pension worth more than your actual salary. Yeah, good for you. And for those of you government workers that went ahead and retired at 50 and then went back to work for the government to get a second pension, shame on you too. Shame on you. That's not the system. That's not That's not right. That's cheating the system. Whether it's legal or not, I'm just telling you, it's cheating the system and it's not right. Because those that come after you will never see that kind of prosperity that you had with your first job, let alone you going back for your second job. Okay, that aside. Unions are on a downcline. People are not voting Democrat. Uh, poor people are not voting Democrat anymore. They're seeing... That and I, this is I'm praying about this, folks. You got to pray about this with me. They're starting to see that hard work and stick to it, intuitiveness pays off in the end. That these uh, tech schools versus colleges promote tech schools so that you can get in, get a technical skill, get out and get a job, uh, versus going to college for four years, spending sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. Not even they don't even teach how to make money. And now you're broke and poor. And who are you voting for? Democrat? No. Now you're going Republican. So Ken Fisher took this 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 article that was written by uh, USA Today about the 50 states, poor states versus rich states. Democrats are in, uh, in, hold the majority legislature in the rich states. Republicans hold the majority legislature in the poorer states. Now what that means is that there's been a shift. Over the last 40 years, a huge shift of those who don't have to shifting to the Republican Party. For those who have less, realizing Republican ideologies. Can you, can you see that? There's been a huge shift. Now, more, more to back up my theory or more to back up my, my, my idea that I, I got from from Ken's article is this hashtag walk away movement is huge. It's bigger than I ever thought it was, folks. And Carrie, Carrie and myself, we're going to be there in Washington, D.C. here uh, this weekend. This weekend, we're leaving Cincinnati on Friday. We're leaving Cincinnati on Friday, and we're going to drive eight straight hours, eight hours in the car to arrive in D.C., to spend the weekend with all our newfound Republican friends, all our newfound, well, well, we won't call them Republican friends. 
all our newfound Trumpocrats, all those, all those under the, the big giant banner of Donald J. Trump. All the Trumpocrats are going to be there. You know the anti is going to be there too. Don't worry, we'll be scoping. We'll catch them. We'll catch them in the act, report them to the cops. But um, last night on the show, I played very early in the show, first hour in the show, I played an eight minute walk away testimony from a very beautiful, intelligent, uh, rough, had a rough life, a black American woman who describes the last 25 years of her life as being extremely tough. Um, so, but you can hear her story for, for yourself. I don't want to get into her story, but, but what she said was that she helped Barack Obama's campaign. And she, she said, I want to give credit where credit is due. I want to give Barack Obama credit for what he did to me, for me to vote Trump. For me to walk away from the Democrat Party, Barack Obama, you have single-handedly destroyed the Democrat Party. A lot of people don't talk about this, but Barack Obama did send the DNC into a $10, $15 million deficit where they owe 10 to 15 to 20 million dollars to vendors and it's stiffing all kinds of people left and right. That's you, Barack Hussein Obama. You did that to the Democrat Party. And that's why Hillary Clinton was able to, to offer the Democrat Party uh, 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 an olive branch and said, if you let me run the DNC, I'll float y'all. And they had no other, uh, DWS had no other, well, DWS is like, all right. Let's get rich. Come on. Let's collude with the super PACs. Let's get rich and let's get elected. Let's keep this boat, this boat afloat. Let's keep this thing running. Yep. That's exactly what happened, folks. And so as this woman tells her walk away story, she says, I made phone calls for Barack Obama. I went door to door, knocking on doors for Barack Obama. And thank you. Credit where credit is due. Thank you, Obama for getting me plugged into and involved in politics for the first time. Folks, we're seeing something we ain't seen in lifetimes, in generations. We are seeing those that have been afraid to get into politics, those that have been told politics is difficult and hard and you'll hate it, those that have uh, hated politics because of the hate and anger that the Democrat Party causes, the angst the Democrat Party causes people to have when they start to get into politics and realize that it is an absolute crushing mess. When you're new into politics, it's hard to get into it. It really is. I mean, it's tough. They don't teach you this in school. So we're seeing a huge shift. And like this woman said in her walkaway story, that she, for the first time in her life at 20, I think she said she was like 25 years old. First time in her life at 25 years old. Um, she started getting in politics, started to learn about politics. And Barack Obama politics, the double-edged sword cuts both ways. Hillary Clinton, DNC, you think you were doing something great by bringing new people in to the evilness of your Democrat party. You thought you were bringing new blood into your party to, to continue the brainwashing and continue their support and their help for your power and control. And in reality, what has happened is that there has been a huge walkaway movement because they have seen the light. When you see firsthand what Barack Hussein Obama is doing, when you feel it firsthand with no jobs, when you see the anger and the hate and the mobs, not jobs, and you start to see some of these, some of these uh, 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 James O'Keefe undercover videos of Claire McCaskill. These young ch children, I mean, they look like children. They're in their, their 20s running their campaign. Talking about lying, cheating, and stealing because that's just what you got to do to win. Folks, that only goes so far. And the people start to get a guilty conscience when they start to realize what they're doing is 
bad and wrong. And so people that are uh, uh, may, may be um, not strong Christians, but, but maybe have gone to church a few times and maybe believe in a higher power or, or, or whatever, you know, start to have a little bit of a guilty conscience or, or they start to tell their, their story, what they do to a good friend or to a husband or to a wife or to a spouse. And they tell them what they're doing and what it's, what, what, uh, what it takes to win. And someone with a good conscience looks them directly in the eye and tells them, you know, this is bad. You know, this is wrong. You know, you probably shouldn't be doing this. When they say that, the jig's up. The game's over. You start to get that guilt of conscience and it just don't work anymore. It starts to fall apart. So you watch, watch folks, this huge movement, this is going to be enormous. I gave you four different anecdotal uh, 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 reasons why there's going to be a red tsunami. And it's true. I absolutely believe it now. Texans vote early, if possible. Hurricane may cause flooding this week. Yeah, good call. They would have let the Guatemalans in. Uh, well, the Guatemalans are about a thousand miles away. Uh, this I watched um, Bill Still's video he put up last night. Bill Still said that the Guatemalans are a thousand miles away, and by military calculations, marching wise, military marching, which is really good. Uh, they it would take them 50 days to get here. So they're not going to be here in time, not at all. And then the other thing too, oh, Mexico is reporting that they have arrested 100 ISIS members and sent them back to Guatemala. Sent them back to Guatemala because Guatemala is the hub for getting passports. You get free passports all day long in Guatemala. Yeah, right? So what's been happening is these terrorists from the Middle East land in Brazil, <clears throat> come up north, and when they get to Guatemala, they can get passports for nothing, for free. The invading hordes are being transported in trucks part of the way. They're going to need a whole lot of transportation. Once they start transporting them in trucks, then the government can pull them over and stop them, detain them. Mexicans are added to the crowds. Yeah, they said the crowd has grown to about 7,000, swelled to about 7,000. I showed video last night of the crowd being paid. Uh, the guy in Spanish saying, women and children first, handing out 20s and 50s and money, handing out money, all in lines, all in rows. Everybody get your money. Everybody get your money. How are they pooping? How are they drinking water? You need at least one gallon of water per day per person to make a trek like that. And for 7,000 people, that's 7,000 gallons of water. You would literally need a water truck with a trailer of poopa potties, like a trailer of, of outhouses, maybe, uh, maybe four each. You'd have to have a 40-foot flatbed. You would have to have a 40-foot flatbed of poop, poop out. I just, you would have to. It'd be out of control. Oh, anyways, folks. All right. Hey, this is uh, Brian Smith, uh, Smith Radio, Military Veteran Talk Radio. Crush the share, crush the follow. Uh, we go live every Sunday evening. I'm going to put the show live on Facebook tonight. Go on Facebook, crush it. Mama, Mama didn't build that. No, but I will give Obama credit for uh, pushing more people away from the Democrat Party and pushing them to the Republican Party. All right, everybody. For Monday Motivation, I'm excited. We're taking our country back. Go to smithradio.com, crush the Patreon button, become a part of history, become a part of Donald Trump's legacy. My pleasure, absolutely my pleasure, Chris. Become a Donald Trump's legacy. You and I are Donald Trump's legacy. We've got to build this on our own. We've got to continue the fight. Go to patreon.com slash smithradio or just go to smithradio.com. Crush it, crush it, crush it. Where was that reported? The 100 ISIS. I post, it was reported. Uh, gatewaypundit.com. Scroll down. It's uh, about four or five articles down. Gatewaypundit.com. And I also posted it on uh, Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. All right, everybody, say a prayer for my Donald Trump forever. 
Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. Man, let's walk away. <laughs> Just walk away. All right, see you guys tomorrow.